This is your boy Conservatives34. I'm sorry, yet again, I won't be talking about music. I'll be talking about baseball, and I know baseball can be boring to many people. But I found some interesting things when it comes to the Miami Marlins and Marlins man that I want to talk about. I will be getting back on the music tip very, very soon. When it gets to May and it gets to June, oh, it's on. When we get all these summer concerts popping off, I will be talking about music, going to shows, giving reviews. But today, I want to talk about the Miami Marlins and Marlins man. And the hypocrisy of how people view the Marlins compared to other teams in the same boat. And in a boat that's a lot worse and has less wins than the Marlins have had over the last 25 years. So let's talk about Marlins man first and who he is. Marlins man is the dude in the bright orange Marlins jersey who is kind of an icon in Major League Baseball. And in the NFL where he goes to Super Bowls. And in college basketball where he goes to these NCAA tournaments for the championship games and has his little Marlins jersey on. He's been a fan since 1993 of the Marlins. He's a loyal fan, and that's what I give him his props for. There's so many bandwagon fans nowadays. Even if you join a bandwagon, stick with that team while they suck. We have so many fans up here in the Northeast, that in Connecticut specifically, because Boston has always supported the Bruins, although they've there's been some empty seats in the late 90s, but... There's been Connecticut Bruins fans that pop out of the woodwork all of a sudden when they won that Stanley Cup. They don't know who Byron Defoe is. They never saw Ray Bork play, even though they have his jersey on. They don't know who Cam Neely is outside of some dude in the front office. They don't remember he actually played and skated a long, long time ago. So I respect guys like Marlins Man who at least support this team. They put their money where their mouth is and they go to these games. The thing I don't like about Marlins Man is some of it is attention-seeking. He wants to be seen right behind home plate, and he thinks that he actually brings in fans or that, oh, he's such an asset to the Marlins. No, he's not, and this is why. He does not bring fans in large numbers to go see him. Fans want to see Stanton. That's why they're not coming out this year because Stanton is gone. Even when they're down five runs, Stanton hits a bomb and is dope. And he's fighting, he's trying to get some, some stats built up, and he's trying to get his teams in the games that they wouldn't be in without him. So that's why fans come. So when the Marlins don't come to an agreement with Marlins, man, I don't feel as bad for him because he's not an asset to fan growth and, and seeing more people out at the stadiums. I'm sorry. There's 5,000 people at the stadium. If he brings in another 5,000 per night because they all want to see Marlins, man, then you negotiate with homie. Because then he's actually an asset to bringing more fans in the seats. Other than that, people don't go to see him. And the thing is, too, if they cut a deal, and Marlins Man's out here kind of laying all the business out there. And that's what players, they do that. They leak stuff. Com uh, companies and teams leak stuff for that reason. But if he's leaking the amount of money he's going to pay, the Marlins... And then it's really at a discount because the, 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 the money he was talking for three years, and he was a lot of money to put down, but the three-year deal he was trying to work out, it's less than what corporations are paying for those same seats. And baseball is reliant upon corporations buying bleacher seats, buying mid-level seats in the club, buying lower-level seats. A lot of the seats that people get to these games are from their company. And it's, some of these are bad seats, some of these are mid-level seats, some of them are good. So when a company comes up and says, you're giving Marlins man this deal, and they see it on Twitter, that's not going to help the Marlins case when they have to negotiate with these businesses that are also sponsors and partners. So I know why they shut it down, because that's a bad PR move to accept that. And he's snitching on the negotiations, and you have other people you have to negotiate with. It's not a good look. Now, what I will say is, despite all that said, what the Marlins are trying to do by blowing up this team is smart. Trust the process. I'm a Sixers fan, too. And basketball is a little harder, but I'm a Sixers fan. Now they're good. I bet I was going to games. They were getting blown out. I was getting laughed at walking out of the venue uh, as an away fan because, uh, again, I live in Connecticut. But the process worked in Philly, but basketball is very hard. In baseball, it's actually the best approach to take because when – Veteran players like Stanton are in a bad market like Miami or ask Vado, Joey Vado in Cincinnati. When they're in a bad market, they get paid a lot of money. After the first six months of that new deal, they're not motivated to play hard. 
So you have an overpaid player, and then in a small market, you can't afford to get other players because you just have one player. What you have to do in a market like Miami is blow up the team, build with young, hungry, humble players, and then win titles. Oh, wait, that's actually what they did the last two World Series they won. So it's funny that people are mad. They were mad when Loria did that um, back in the day, and they beat the Yankees. My New York Yankees, who I love, they got beat in the 2003 World Series by a young, hungry team. Same thing in the, the 90s when they won their first World Series. They had hungry players that weren't about the money. They were about winning a World Series. So I can't believe that people are criticizing the Marlins for blowing it up. What, you want them to overpay Stanton to just be trash? No. Trade Stanton to the Yankees? Now, I think it's, it's, as a Yankees fan, it's suspect that Jeter got that through. You know, it's a little weird. You know, I think it's some collusion. And I'm a Yankees fan, trust me. But if, he, if Stanton went to another contending team, if it was the Red Sox or anyone else, he's going to be better there. Those teams can afford his salary, and they have other pieces that they can build around. That's where Stanton belongs. These players like Stanton don't belong in Cincinnati's and the Kansas City's and the Baltimore's. They belong in markets that can afford big names. The smaller markets need to build their farm systems, just like the Marlins did, and then get these young, hungry te teams out to beat the big monsters like the Yankees and the Red Sox. So the Marlins are taking the right approach for their market. And the biggest thing I want you to get out of this video is Marlins fans are, on some terms, ungrateful. You've won two World Series in the last 20 years or so. That's better than the majority of Major League Baseball teams. Most teams haven't even made it to a World Series in the last 20 years, let alone won one, let alone won two. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Yankees, Red Sox, Cardinals, and the San Francisco Giants are the four teams I can think of that have won in the last 20 years multiple World Series. Everyone else had one, and that was it. They were one and done. Like these NCAA players, you know, they were that was it. They got one hot one, and that was it. It's hard. And the great thing about baseball is, as boring as it can be for many fans, your team has a chance. And the funny thing was, Marlins man said the Marlins are a triple-A team. And in some ways, maybe you could make an argument for that. But the Marlins just took two games in the last four games. They're two and two. So the Marlins have, have won... They're at 500. They're not. Now, maybe they'll go in the tank later in the year, but they did fairly well for their first four games and no major features like a Nas Illmatic album. They did okay. You know, the, the Cubs, they didn't get the job done for two of those games. So it's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're tanking. They're doing this. No, they're rebuilding, and these young, hum, humble kids are trying to earn a contract, and they're two and two. It's better than being 0-4, which we wouldn't be surprised if that happened. And one thing I want to happen is there should be equal hate across the board for all struggling teams. And the Marlins, for as much as they've struggled, have done better than the Orioles. What have the Orioles done in the last 20 years? And especially post Cal Ripken. What have the Cincinnati Reds done in the last 20 years? You know, without the Nasty Boys and everyone else in the early 90s. What have the Oakland A's done in the last 20 years? They, these teams aren't winning World Series, and they have empty seats left and right. What have the Mariners done since Griffey and company were killing it in the mid-90s? They're not making postseason runs. So if you're going to be critical of the Marlins, be critical of all the other teams that haven't had nearly as much success as the Marlins have had in the last 20 years. Now, yes, in the last 10 years, it's been kind of bleak, but... They've won two World Series champions, chips, excuse me, championships. And the last thing I'll say is that Jeter has PR issues. He bombed his opening day interview. I'm a Yankees fan. He bombed that interview. He bombed it. He hasn't done the best right now with his how he markets himself. He really looks like a Steinbrenner right now. Filthy rich superstar coming in from New York to try to run the Miami Marlins like oh I can do this just like batting it's it seems condescending now I know he's doing his best and Jeter's gonna live and he's gonna learn I think he's gonna get better but this may impact Jeter's legacy if he bombs in Miami and I hope he doesn't I really wish him the best and Donnie baseball the best but if he bombs and this team doesn't do what Loria did 
this may impact. Now, he's always going to be known as the humble, great player. But just like Jordan took flack in ownership, I think that Jeter is going to take flack in ownership unless he learns this system and gets better. And I, I believe he can. And I, I think that he will make this team a little bit better. How much better, I don't know. But definitely like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. But again, I think the Marlins get more hate than they deserve. And again, fans are never realistic, especially on social media, on Twitter, you know, Facebook, all these uh, different blogs. Two World Series in 20 plus years or so, give or take, that's better than the majority of these teams out here. And that's all I got to say. It's your boy, Concert Viz 34. I'm out.